Romancing someone in a video game is usually no more complicated than winning enough tickets on skee-ball to buy yourself a novelty comb. Only instead of a novelty comb, you earn yourself a smoochy cutscene. However, it's not this easy for everyone all the time, especially not when they're busting out chat-up lines so cheesy they would embarrass James Bond. Oh, uh, um, because I wanted to ask you something, which is, what's your name? Oof, take a listen to these cringy pickup lines that didn't work and probably never will. And also, beware some minor spoilers for these following games. <laughs> Oh, Governor. Oh, Threepwood. Oh, Elaine. Oh, Guybrush. Love Muffin. Sugar Boots. Honey Pumpkin. Plunder Bunny. Most of the time, wannabe pirate hero Guybrush Threepwood is pretty quick-witted, whether he's talking to dogs, <laughs> insulting other pirates in a sword fight, you fight like a dairy farmer. How appropriate! You fight like a cow! Or insulting other pirates who are in jail. You gotta get me out of here! I'm a victim of society! Not to mention halitosis. I'm starting to realize Guybrush is a bit of a jerk. Wow. Gonna need a minute. Anywho, the point is Guybrush isn't often at a loss for words. This is what makes his initial attempts to woo Melee Island Governor Elaine Marley so unexpected. I'm Governor Marley. Governor Elaine Marley. So my idol belongs in a museum, eh? Well... The loquacious Guybrush is so flustered by the governor that not even one sentence into their first conversation, all actual human words elude him to be replaced by random strings of consonants. Boof. Needless to say, this doesn't go down super well with the governor, who is a busy woman and doesn't have time to stand around being bluffed at by a wannabe pirate. Well, you're obviously not in the mood for idle chit-chat, are you? Hang on, maybe Guybrush can salvage this. Boo. Mrfnkiv! Dwingly? <sighs> I really wish I knew how to talk to women. Skybrush does eventually regain the ability to say words, but Elaine isn't letting him off easy. That sounds like something my husband would say. <laughs> so that was the secret of Monkey Island. I always wondered. Corrupted cores, we're in luck. You find a way to stun him, I'll send you a core, and then you attach it to him. If we do it a few times, he might become corrupt enough for another core transfer. The key lesson that we learned from The Force Awakens is that the most adorable shape for a robot to be is round. Can't believe we wasted all those years liking R2-D2, the stupid trash can idiot. Yeah, you heard me. So, chalk up one advantage to the Adventure Sphere off of Portal 2, who is as spherical as a British football and twice as manly. Quick, what's the situation? Oh, hey, hi, you pretty lady. Name's Rick. So you out having yourself a little adventure? The Adventure Sphere, or Rick, is a corrupted personality sphere that must be hooked up to tyrannical AI dimwit Wheatley in order to defeat him. Warning. Core corruption at 50%. But the macho adventure sphere would rather hook up with portal popping protagonist Chell. I'll tell you, it's times like this I wish I had a waist so I could wear all my black belts. Yeah, you know, pretty much everything. Karate, Larante, Jiu Jitsu, Kick Punch, Belt Making, Taekwondo, Bid. Yeah, I'd rate his chances pretty low with that kind of black belt braggadocio. The only smooth lines that guy's got are the ones on his body. Smooth because he's a sphere. Come on, you get it. What about that one? Oh, she is beautiful. Okay, then go talk to her. Just like that? Talk about what? Ezio Auditore has a reputation as a ladies' man on account of all the sex he's always having. In fact, he's had so much practice that he can get his clothes back on in five seconds. We count it. I have to find Mario and rally the troops. It's easy when all your clothes are tearaway stripper clothes. However, Ezio wasn't always the Renaissance Romeo we know from later in the games, as we see from his initial attempt to woo Christina Vespucci in Assassin's Creed 2. Oh, uh, um, because I wanted to ask you something, which is, what's your name? Not one you'll ever need to make yourself. Okay, not a strong start. What else you got, Ezio? Aspetta, I wasn't ready. 
planning on being really charming and fun. And I just have a second chance. Ouch, swing and a miss. Quick, Ezio, maybe you can still save this. No, I can still fix these. I'll follow her away. See where she lives. Okay, that's enough romance for you for today, Ezio. Not to worry though, because before long, Ezio grows into his role as the Florentine love machine. For comparison, let's take a look at one of his chat-up lines that actually worked. May I come in? Fine, but only for a minute. A minute is all I need. Indeed. W well, wait, uh, that came out wrong. Oh, wow. Dude, good thing you've got those cheekbones. The Arcturus Prime relays in range. Initiating transmission sequence. When it comes to making out with fellow crew members, the fraternization policy aboard the Normandy is the same as the one in the ship's canteen. Help yourselves, please clean up after. Combine that policy with Shepard's track record for charming his or her way into the space pants of intelligent life all over the known galaxy, and you might expect Shep to succeed with romantic overtures that would spell disaster to a lesser mortal. And yet, in Mass Effect 1, if you've been stringing along a couple of potential love interests for too long, you wind up in less of a steamy love triangle and more of a heated confrontation triangle. Somebody in this room needs to make a choice. It ain't me, and it ain't you. Surely, if anyone can successfully proposition two crewmates at the same time with a half-baked chat-up line, it's Commander Shep. We're resolving this now, Shepard. Me or her. Why do I have to make a choice? Maybe the three of us could... Mm-mm. Uh -uh. No, I take it back. In your dreams, Commander. I hope you two, or however many you end up with, will be happy together. Ouch, Ashley. Wow. I guess Commander Shepard's going to have to take that bumper sticker off the back of the old Normandy. One that says, if this ship's a rockin', we're going through a mass relay. Or don't come a-knockin' because of the stuff that's going on inside. I don't care what you say! Shut your mouth! Shut it! Shut! Just keep it shut! Oh, you know full well exactly what you didn't say! It's no good. Well, you can be surrounded by your young girls and your threesomes and your parties, and you will be miserable! You could have had it all with me! Mary Ann Quinn is one of those nuanced female characters that GTA 5 does so well, in that she's a cartoonishly furious exercise fanatic who hates all men! Well, you and I don't care that we just met last week all right just stop looking at me don't look at me say something naturally Trevor is immediately smitten with Mary Ann and so he decides to convey that affection with the Trevoriest pickup move of all time which is punching out Mary Ann's boyfriend and screaming in her face that he loves her yeah I really do mm. ah. oh I love you I mean you and I can see why that approach didn't work but this is Trevor we're talking about no, to win Marianne's love, he needs to prove himself through a moderately taxing downhill cycle. You're incredible! Marry me! Be done with this! Shut up! Don't talk to me! I defended your honor! I took out the alpha male! Evolution demands that we rut like beasts! Still, win the race, and presumably Marianne will give Trevor a second chance to make a good first impression. Woo! I win! Come on! Come on, what? Sex reward! That's how this works. Or that? Sure. I guess. You're deluded! Spread your genome in a gym sock! Oh, I love you! Or not? Man, you two are complicated. The robot from Pandora is out of chips. Darn it! I forgot to turn on my poker subroutine! Can I get a do-over? Your question is activating my rarely used giggle center. Tee hee. Correct! Poker Night 2 is a poker simulation game with a selection of video game cameos more mismatched than the cast of Celebrity Big Brother in any given year. Why can't Hollywood let our childhood icons die a dignified death instead of parading them around like rotting zombies? Among the famous faces you'll be playing against in this high-stakes game is the Borderlands bot who won't quit bugging you, aka Claptrap. What? Oh, sorry. I was streaming kitten videos on my other processor. It kind of lost track of the hand. Guess I better... Fold. The dealer ruling the game with an iron chassis, meanwhile, is none other than Portal's AI antagonist, GLaDOS. What was that? Did you just try to hypnotize us with subliminals? Maybe. Are you upset? Upset? <laughs> I think I'm in love. 
excuse me. Claptrap is sweet on GLaDOS from the get-go, but if you came here hoping for hot robot-on-robot -robot action, then one, it's pretty weird, and two, you're out of luck. So why don't we just go out for some pasta, a couple of bottles of Merlot, and a little conversation? Are you flirting with me? Let me check my variables. Yep, the flirting flag is set to true. Whoa, you kind of drifted off there. See, Claptrap, your mistake there was offering GLaDOS pasta and wine, two things that she physically can't consume. Have you considered offering her a fresh vat of neurotoxin? She always gets a kick out of that. Used on other people? I might as well say it now. I've always loved you, baby. Were I outfitted with a dry heave subroutine, I'd activate it now. Or just keep at it with the heavy duty come ons. See how that works out. What's a hot babe like that doing in a miserable, smelly, broken down joint like this? Hey, Bob, just keep that kind of narration to yourself. Leisure Suit Larry was a game in which you played a hapless horn dog desperately trying to get laid. Wait, am I reading the Assassin's Creed entry again? I'm not. Okay. In fact, the leisure suit wearing Larry Laffer is a lot less successful in his sex ventures than Ezio Auditore. This is only partly due to the fact that he doesn't look like an underwear model. Unless those underwear are some sort of prescription underwear for crotch illnesses. After your cab ride, you may be low on funds, but you've got the looks, the lines, and the leisure suit. It's more how his attempts to charm the opposite sex are all terrible. For example, there's the bad chat-up lines. You must be tired. You've been running through my mind all day. I know, but you keep following me anyway. And then there's where he's just straight up touching people. You lightly rest your hand on the hot babe. Do that again, and I'll snap your wrist like kindling and tie your scrotum around your neck. I think I can see where you're going wrong, Larry. Most confusing of all, however, is this bizarre attempt in which Larry tries to weave a sexy metaphor about squirrels. Sorry if this sounds a little squirrely, baby, but I'd like to store you in my cheek pouches for a snowy day. What? She... pouch... Larry? Uh, wait, I'm sure she's got this. I'd like to crack your skull like a nut and bury your brains in the park. Oh damn! I guess you could say that was... a corny line? Get it? I mean, it wasn't just corny, it was... basically incomprehensible, but you know, squirrels, acorns... You get it! At your service. Of course. If you set your sights on romancing Alistair in Dragon Age Origins, and I mean, why wouldn't you? Then we can heartily endorse not getting mired in this bit of double entendre banter as confusing as it is dorky. This is the bit where you, the suave flirt you are, are casually researching his sexual history, which, I mean, there's your first mistake. Never, never what? Had a good pair of shoes? I'm not sure I do. Have I... Never seen a basilisk? Ate jellied ham? Have I never licked a lamppost in winter? Wait, what? Lampposts? Well, tell me, have you ever licked a lamppost in winter? What are we talking about now? That's a disturbing mental image you've conjured for me right there. Sorry, I'm lost. Okay, yes, things eventually work themselves out between you, but we can't help but think this whole weird exchange early in the relationship left both sides with more questions than answers, as well as some deeply confusing feelings about lampposts. I'll be... <laughs> I'll be standing over here until the blushing stops. Just to be uh, safe. You know how it is. But at least you upped your game in time for Dragon Age Inquisition! Or not? Do you think that you and I might someday... How very sweet of you to ask, but no. Well, now, those were some of the chat-up lines we can heartily endorse you don't attempt at home. Um, not without some, some serious warnings and caveats and absolutely no guarantee of their success. But hey, you know, if any of them do work out for you, let us know in the comments. And also, maybe entertain yourself with some more videos from outside Xbox up here and some more um, videos from outside Extra, our lovely sister channel down here. See you next time.